Hey folks, just a quick little update. For our YouTube users, you may have noticed that our old episode went down and we've replaced it with this new version simply because, fuck Nazis, we don't want to display that symbol anymore. It's very obviously a failed swastika. We're not showing it anymore. The Geta Fenris are a good tribe. They really need to clean it up. That image is the first and most immediate step to take. So as much as we can do auditorily, we have done. Visually, we're doing it now. Welcome to the Werewolf Den, where we delve into gaming concepts behind White Wolf's Werewolf the Apocalypse. I'm Amelin. And I'm Ryan. Alright, so welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about one of the more out-of-game controversial tribes, I guess would be the way to mm -hmm. yep. look at it. But we're going to tr do our best to talk about them positively, of course. So we're going to talk about... The Geta Fenris. Yeah, there's a lot of really great stuff to be found within the Geta Fenris. It's a very deep tribe, at least I think, and a lot of that sort of gets washed away with sort of these stereotypes. And again, we're trying to break from especially things like cultural heritage, which I think really, really restricts this tribe in a lot of senses. We'll go ahead and get right into it. So when considering the Geta Fenris, the key thing that I sort of latch on to is the concept of strength. And this can come in a lot of different facets. Usually it's martial in style, it's physical strength and tenacity, resilience, you know, not giving up and in any circumstance. But this can also be strength of character as well. And yeah, there's a lot of room to, I think, interpret what strength means. Besides from just having the biggest muscles and the nastiest right hook, strength can be something like, you know, your access to weaponry, your ability to contribute to the fight for Gaia as a conceptualization of strength and power. And I think once you start to consider it from that perspective, it opens up a lot of opportunities within this tribe. The other way that I think is a good way to look at the Gita Fenris in a much more positive manner is I always like to view the tribe as the tribe of action. While other tribes may be deliberating how to deal with an issue or something like that, the Gita Fenris know how to deal with the issue. They see the problem and they don't hesitate. They take care of the problem. And this can be both good and bad and that can lead to better story by having it that way. It's a very proactive tribe. Mm -hmm. And it's also a great tribe for first time players. We talked about in the Children of Gaia episode how a lot of people brand new to Werewolf, you know, fresh off the block, are told to play Children of Gaia because it's sort of easily accessible. And we tried to sort of dispel that idea. The Geta Fenris, however, we think are very, very good for these first-time players. Mm -hmm. Because you can come in and you can have these sort of gut-wrench reactions to a lot of different circumstances. And instead of, you know, navel-gazing or things like that, they're very, very keen to that sort of kick open the door and fight anything that's there mentality. And this works really, really well for players who are new to the game or new to gaming in general, who oftentimes have this mentality coming in from video games and movies that they've played. This is sort of the way that they've been shown to operate. And the Geta Fenris sync up really, really well with this concept. And with the Geta Fenris, because their philosophy is more narrowly focused on the aspect of strength and taking action, they don't necessarily get distracted if that's the word you want to use, by like all of the other things that are coming around. If you want to be a person that sees colonization as a bad thing, the Geta are not going to see that as a problem, so long as you're willing to do something about it. If you want to be a person that sees misogyny as a bad thing, the Geta Fenris are not necessarily going to see that as a problem. Where it comes into a problem, we'll discuss later. But for new players, Fenris himself does not care who you are, so long as you are willing to do something about the problems you see in the world. Yeah, a lot of the socio-political problems that the other tribes latch on to, the Geta Fenris don't. And so they are sort of divorced from those concerns and mentalities, similar in a sense to the Fianna, where they don't really have one of those things to define themselves by. But I think the Geta Fenris take it even further. So the big thing with the Geta Fenris that is the first kind of limiting factor that we generally see is the Geta Fenris is another one of those big 
heritage tribes, and it does not need to be. Yeah, for one, uh, the very mythology that they're drawing from doesn't quite sync up with the concern for Gaia. You know, within Norse mythology, it, Fenris is sort of an antagonistic figure. At least in every iteration of the mythology that we know of, if there's some Norse mythology scholar out there that can tell us of a version of Fenris that does not bite off someone's hand and go to eat the sun, causing the end of the world, we're happy to hear about that person. Yeah, so I, I just feel that the, the cultural heritage aspect really doesn't sync up well here. And I would rather the tribe be divorced from any one particular... I, I would prefer most of the tribes be divorced from their, their cultural, you know, limelight spot. I think it's great to draw inspiration from, but with a lot of the tribes, it just feels too heavy-handed. Like, oh, if you're Get, you have to be a Viking warrior. And I just... It, it feels way too restrictive and downing from yeah. my perspective. Especially when you start getting into certain aspects when you start learning about certain aspects of get history and are like why does this work this does not work this does not logically line up mm -hmm. so yeah moving on from that we do want to offer what we think are good examples of positive get a Fenris kind of role model <laughs> that you could maybe base your ideas off of we're gonna use examples from various different cultures as well as from fiction the first one that I'm going to bring up is one that we had actually discussed earlier. We were having discussions about which members of which tribe the various different Avengers were in. And we both settled on, this is going to be a huge shock for you guys, it's not Thor that's a get a Fenris. It's Captain America. Yeah, Captain America really embodies this concept of strength. From the very beginning within the Marvel Cinematic Universe, he is concerned about being big enough and strong enough to join the fight you know, to contribute in the way that he thinks, right? This was his focus. You know, selling bail bonds, or excuse me, selling war bonds and collecting rubber scraps, this isn't what Steve Rogers was doing. He wanted to enlist. He wanted to fight. And throughout his cinematic journey, he's always had this mentality. Mm -hmm. He's not one to navel gaze, he is one to act. Most of the time, that is with his fists, but not always. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, that concept of strength comes from his inner character. His way of acting, you know, at the beginning of Endgame, is to hold talks with people and just have sort of group therapy. This is his way to act. He doesn't sit and twiddle his thumbs. He's finding a way to contribute, and he's doing that. He's always active. Like mm -hmm. Amalyn said, this is a big part of the tribe. Mm -hmm. There was also, you had mentioned, there is a group of native people from... The Maori. Yeah, so the Maori, the indigenous peoples of the New Zealand region, of the Peloponnesians. They were a, a warrior society that sort of stood out, historically speaking, because the British had a horrible time trying to conquer them. And a lot of their cultural aspects, such as the haka, which they perform for a myriad number of reasons, these still persist and are carried on in society. And I think that a Maori uh, get of Fenris makes perfect sense. That it was their, their martial strength that was able to preserve their culture. And so that makes absolute sense from the get perspective, that this would work out perfectly, regardless of all the Norse trappings with the tribe. This just fits too well. Another example that I like to think of are the Hong Kong protesters are a really good example of get a Fenris that are not tied to Norse mythology. These are people who have seen something wrong with the way that they're treated, with the way that it, the world is reacting around them, and they will take action. They are immediately scraping up and doing whatever they can. They're boycotting various companies that are trying to capitulate to China. They're a good example of get a Fenris that is not tied to being a Viking. And this sort of highlights something which I think is important to remember with the get. And it sort of comes from this perspective of, all right, we're talking about Hong Kong protesters. These aren't, you know, beef neck, 
your trapezius muscles are extending beyond the human frame sort of thing. These are people who are exhibiting strength in trying times. And the Geta Fenris are known for throwing people into the chopping block to see if they'll come out alive or not. Their rites of passage are considered the most lethal, the most dangerous, because only the strongest can survive. And I think that's important to remember that you know, that strength can come from a lot of different sources. And it's not just your trapezius muscles that determine that. It can be your resilience, your never-say-die attitude. These things can still contribute to get. And so just because you're playing a member of this tribe doesn't mean you have to be a jacked-out, roided monstrosity. That strength can come in all sorts of different dimensions. And so long as you're still utilizing that strength and acting upon it, you still fit within the tribe. Mm -hmm. They're very much, with that whole aspect of they do not hesitate too, that means that they do not tolerate hesitance either. So it's one of, it is one of those things where if you are a Blue Lives Matter person who's like, oh, well, there's room for debate about that or whatever, it gets going to be like, fuck off with you. It gets going to call you a fucking coward if you try to both sides a very obvious wrong to them. Another thing that I like to point out about the Get is that they have a very anachronistic worldview, especially from the human perspective. And I think that this is something to both consider, but it also opens a lot of opportunities. In particular, I think this works really, really well for non Hamid characters, especially Lupus, where a lot of these socioeconomic things you can be exposed to them, certainly, you know, as a cub, but they're still very alien. Mm -hmm. Whereas the get mentality, the get philosophy, is something that syncs up very, very naturally, regardless of your Hamid ancestry or not. But I think it's also something that really has to come from extenuating circumstances in a lot of places. So, like, for example, the Hong Kong protesters. They're going through some very unique circumstances right now. And so that engenders this ghetto Fenris concept. If you're John Smith, who has had a very generic life and who has nothing really fancy about the background that you've written up for the character, I kind of have to wonder why ghetto Fenris would be an option or an opportunity. Because it's just not something that most people, especially in the modern age, really have. This philosophy is very stark. And I think that's something to consider you know, when we've talked about this tribe, we've talked about Vikings and Maori. We've talked about warrior societies and experiences from the past. These things typically don't happen, you know, in suburbia, in your average game setting. And so it's something to think about. Again, not as a barrier, but as a way to draw interesting concepts into the character. Mm -hmm. But moving on from that then... Let's go ahead and talk then about common player tropes with the Get of Fenris. And the obvious most common one is the Get of Fenris Beefhead Arun. Yeah, they, they need not all be Aruns. We kind of feel that that matchup is rather redundant. Very redundant. Both not only system-wise, but also from a roleplay perspective. And that, that's fine. There's nothing to say that you can't play a Geta Fenris Arun, but I feel that a lot of people, again, just sort of have this, you know, we, we seem to mention this in every single episode, but how D&D has sort of influenced Werewolf the Apocalypse, and I think this is a part of it. You know, we, we have a game very recently where a player was suggested she wanted to be this, this fighter character, and her spouse suggested Geta Fenris Arun. Because, of course, right, they're the fightiest of the fighters. Yeah. You are taking the best race to play a fighter class with and then pairing it up with fighter for optimum results. And White Wolf, to its benefit, doesn't subscribe to that at all. And with the Get of Fenris, again, mechanically, we find a lot of gifts sync yep. up between the Arun yeah. and the tribe. You start up Get of Fenris, they get, like... In the particularly in those earlier edition books, like nearly all of the early Get a Fenris gifts are our rune gifts, and if you're one of those people who is trying to even do like the D and D thing where you're trying to min max it, then why would you do Get a Fenris our rune then? Yeah. That is just 
crippling yourself. Mm -hmm. And again, we're not trying to dissuade people from being Geta Fenris Arun. We're trying to get people to consider playing the other auspices as well. Because in the LARP that I ran, most Geta Fenris were Aruns. Mm -hmm. I had one Philodox who was awesome. But yeah, most people just immediately go to that. And you're not really losing any roleplay potential by selecting a different tribe. In fact, I kind of like the concept of, well, I was born under a crescent moon, but I have this philosophy and this mentality. I want to be a great warrior. I'm going to join the Geta Fenris. Mm -hmm. And the Geta Fenris are going to say, you know what? It doesn't matter what auspice you're a part of. You have to be strong. And they're going to throw you to that meat grinder. And hopefully you'll come out the other side still kicking. And so it's, it's a great tribe, I think, for that... I wish I were an Arun, but I wasn't born under a full moon. I'll take this tribe to compensate. Yes, yes. Get a Fenris have such great potential for all of the other auspices, but Arun, it, I'm just always kind of like, if you're playing Arun, try one of the other tribes. Seriously. Or at least consider it. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I think it's also a very easy tribe to conceptualize how the other auspices would work. Because they've got that little nonsense, you know, might makes right and often sense mentality, it's easy to see how, for example, a get of Fenris Ragabash would be different than any other Ragabash. Because they're not going to pull these elaborate pranks, they're going to be rather straightforward about the matter, and maybe just confront you about your, you know, ideas or your plans, and then play face punch until they come out on top and change the course of events. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we covered most everything on the positive angle. Yeah, I think so. the last thing we wanted to talk about was 5th edition hopes. Oh. Because the tribe has been attached to the history of the Third Reich. That There was a small sliver of the tribe that sort of went along with the Nazis. And because of that, I feel that it has colored the tribe as a whole. And it's one of those things where, sadly, it's kind of obvious that this notion of them doing this was there from the beginning, because if you are watching this on our YouTube page, you've been staring at the title card artwork that I did for this episode, which means you are staring at the Geta Fenris glyph. And what does that look like, friends? It looks like a swastika. Yes, it does. And the Geta Fenris, it's easy to see how fascism can be an ideology to draw from this. I mean, I also think it's easy to see how werewolves, these supernaturally powerful, better than the average Joe species, can also have a very fascist outlook. But honestly, that can happen with any of the World of Darkness characters. You can have this with vampires very easily. You could have this with mummies. You could have this with any of them. But for some reason, it has really attached itself to Werewolf, and it has really attached itself to the Geta Fenris. Yeah. And so, one of my big hopes for 5th edition, with a lot of the tribes, I kind of don't want them touched. Like, Bonars, just please, please, just, just, oh, talked about that already. Maybe get rid of the General Lee, or something like that reference? Yeah, but... find something better, you know. They've chosen poverty, they're not born into poverty. Oh, I'm go, uh. Anyway, Geta Fenris. The focus is on Geta Fenris. But I would like to see this cultural heritage get broken. Again, I think it's awesome to have like a camp of the Git that are focused on Fenris and on Norse mythology and being a Viking and all of that. But there's a lot of good in this tribe. And I feel that it has become saddled with this connotation that it is a tribe for Nazis. And I myself have never played a Get of Fenris in a LARP because I wouldn't feel comfortable bringing that upon myself of having other players look at me and think of me in that light. And again, like we've tried to express, there's a lot of good in this tribe. It's very, very important to the werewolf mythology mm -hmm. and to the very concept of werewolf. This is a, a war, right? Mm -hmm. And these are soldiers, the best soldiers. And so to have the tribe sort of get smashed to pieces with a swastika sucks. So one of the things that I feel like would be the best way to address this, I don't necessarily want them to retcon the Nazi stuff out, because first and foremost, older players are going to remember it. They're yep. going to remember it, they're going to bring it up, there's going to be players that 
I didn't bring it up. Uh, there's going to be players that didn't read the new version of the book, but they've played the old version and they're familiar enough with that old history that they just kind of retconned it in their head already, that it's already set up that way. What I want to do is embrace the aspect, and I really want, please listen to me, White Wolf Riders, when I say this, embrace the aspect that get a Fenris die young. This is something that is very canon and has been all over every single one of the books. Get a Fenris die young. Being a Geta Fenris is brutal. That's what happens when you are a tribe of war at a time of war. Especially with your act first, think second, second. mentality. So if you embrace this notion that the Geta Fenris die young, that means old ideas die with the villains of the past. Mm -hmm. New Geta Fenris that come in can come in and be like, Fuck those guys. We are going to rise up and make those tribes better. And for me, I think it's a really good story arc to run with. With if you get a new get a finish that comes in and they're like, all right, I'm here. I'm going to settle things up. And what the fuck is that? And point to an elder that's holding to those old shit and have that new person come in and rise up through the ranks to kick that elder in the teeth. Mm -hmm. And even if you're going to stick to the Norse mythology, again, the Norse were a part of Germanic culture. People in the north worshipped Odin. People in the south in the Germanic area worshipped Woden. And so it's still the same culture. And people in Germany now have a very distinct perspective on their Nazi past and how you deal with that. Mm -hmm. And so, just as they've done with the Black Fury, where they have a named character, I can't remember her name off the top of my head, but she's trans, I think, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and so they're using this as an opportunity to sort of explore and expand the tribe. I want to see this happen in 5th edition. I want to see an NPC character who is significant within the tribe, who is advocating in this direction. Because mm -hmm. frankly... Fuck Nazis, get the fuck out of my hobby, you suck. <laughs> One of the big motivating aspects to creating this podcast was we were sitting there trying to find for players to play within the tribe that they can do while they're doing chores or if they are a blind character, which is, I work with people with disabilities on a regular basis in my normal job. So a lot of the old White Wolf books are not screen re reader friendly, so they are not dis disability friendly. Mm -hmm. So having like these auditory versions available for players to play with, have them listen to and learn from was very important to me. There are so many Nazis in the fandom. Yeah, you just trying to look up werewolf fan art is, it's a crucible. It is. And so one of our big goals with this is to be like, there's, thankfully, there's plenty of other aspects out there for people to explore with, and it's such as Werewolf. The podcast is one that's also exclusive to Werewolf that helps out with this. There's the Primogen, there's Outstar. They're not exclusive to Werewolf, but they are very leftist or at very least liberal friendly. Inclusive, mm -hmm. shall we say? So we want to just be another voice in the dark saying it's okay to be a leftist and be a Geta Fenris. Yeah, it's okay to be anti-fascist and like the Geta Fenris. Mm -hmm. There's room for that. It's a good tribe and it has a lot of potential. And yes. it sucks that Nazis ruin everything they touch. Be a Git that throws a Molotov. Seriously. Yes. Be All Captain right. America. <laughs> be Captain America. Sell yes. war bonds and punch Nazis. <laughs> All for Fenris. <laughs> All right. Well, with that, I think we've more or less covered everything that we want to cover. Yep. All right. So okay. next time, we're thankfully at least getting a little bit of a reprieve from Cultural Heritage Tribes, and we're talking about, who oh boy, the Glasswalkers. Yep. Glasswalkers are fun. We have some critiques. Yes. No robots. <laughs> I'll see you next time. Bye.